it's it's give and take. You know what I mean? There's pros and there's cons to it. You see what I'm saying? So like, you know, there's some things that I don't like, you know, but there's also there's also more that I do like. You know, we do for the most part, I know with the account that we're on, which is a team account, you know, they for the most part keep us running and we have a certain a certain system that All right, Jerome from South Carolina in the building. Yep. So I guess uh, I, I guess we're just gonna keep it simple, bro. You uh, reached out to me in the comment session, and uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the company you you driving for. Are you are you currently driving for this company, or 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 what? Yeah. Uh, so I work for Warner Enterprises. Uh, I currently drive for them. Uh, I was trying to leave a few uh, last week, I think. Me and my fiance, we actually team drive for them. And so we was trying to leave. And so like when we put in our notice and turned out, like we, we turned in our truck and everything. They like, turned in the keys and as we left, they called us back and was like, Hey, you know, we'll give y'all more money to stay. And I'm I'm assuming just because Warner, they need team drivers. You know, like they're they're thirsty for team drivers, I guess. And so they wasn't trying to lose, like, you know, a good team. You know what I mean? Like, you got, of course, you got those teams that don't really run as hard. But me and my fiance, like, we give up our apartment and, you know, this is what we're doing. So we was actually going to leave Warner to go to another company that was paying uh, 70 cents a mile. And so I told my fleet manager, I was like, hey, you know, if y'all give us 65 cents, we'll stay. And they went above and beyond that. How long, how long have you been driving for Warner? So uh, I actually got my CDL last April. So like not this year, but like 2022. Right. And so I've been driving at Warner since basically like May of 22. All right. So you got your, you got your CDLs through Warner as well or through Roadmasters? Well, yeah. So I actually went through Roadmaster. Like Roadmaster is a good school if you're trying to get your CDL, but and if you don't have any cash up front to go to CDL school, they're a good school because they will finance you. Even with a not so great credit score, they'll still finance you. But the downside is the interest rate on that on that finance is like 18%. So like Roadmaster charges like $6,900 for their CDL school. And they hit you in the pocket really hard for the extra interest on it. So you end up, if you go to this set of loans, so like, let's say like six, two months or something like that, you'll end up paying close to 10 K for CEO. But if you ain't got that money to pay for it, I don't back, back it up, bro. Back, back it up. You, you've been driving for Warner about a year now, right? Yeah. So Going through Roadmasters, Warner should have covered that for you. You 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 went through the, you you stayed with them for a year, and wasn't Warner supposed to cover that for you? Am I am I missing something? Yeah, here? so Warner. Yeah, and I'm explaining. <clears throat> so Warner, they and this is one of the the kind of crazy things that they tell you is like that they reimburse you back for CDL school, but that's not true. So what Warner does is like they like for me it's the third week of the month, right? They'll yank that two hundred something dollars out of my check and pay it for me, so that way I don't have to route. You will end up, you know, not getting it paid off in a timely fashion. So what I figured out is the best thing to do is okay when they they'll take that money off, so they take out two hundred and twenty seven dollars for it, right, out of your paycheck. But you also, if you can afford it pay more towards it. So what I was doing for the last maybe like six months or so, what I've been doing is I'll take out three hundred dollars out of my check or whatever myself and go to the go to the company and pay that three hundred dollars. So instead of paying two hundred and twenty seven dollars per month on that through Warner, I'll pay five hundred dollars towards it. You know, and being that I don't have an apartment, it's easier for me, you know, to take that money I would have been paid for an apartment to pay off the CDL school. So hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have it paid off. You know, I've been working for them for a year and they've been taking it out. It's just, you know, the interest rate is so high on it that it don't really do anything. 
I'm kind of confused. <laughs> For somebody with a good credit score. Uh, wait, I I was under the impression that if you decide to go, because Roadmasters have contracts with different uh, trucking companies, being that Warner owns Roadmasters, but they have... They have different contracts with with different companies that would cover your CDL uh, costs if you would drive so, with the company for a year or more. That, and that that's that's the crazy thing. That's the crazy thing is that okay, yeah, Warner does own Roadmaster, right? And you can go to Roadmaster and not go to Warner. Like I had people in my CDL class, you know, that didn't end up going to Warner, or people that you know was there before me that didn't go to Warner. Right, now you can go there and get your CDL. You know, it's just it's a funnel. You see what I'm saying? So if you're looking to get your CDL, you know, you go to Roadmaster, you got a guaranteed job coming out of CDL school. Like there's a lot of people that I see on your channel, you know, and I see in these Facebook groups that just go to these random Joe Blow, you know, CDL school, and then they have to wait three months, weeks on end, you know, a year. I see somebody wait a year. They had this CDL for, CDL for a year and they haven't found a job. Like this route. You can technically, it's all about getting your CDL, just getting it. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of people, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain because, like, they do talk about other companies, but they push Warner. Of course they do. I mean, you know, Warner owns the school. So, I, I mean, I would push Warner, too. But... After you get your CDL, you drive for Warner. You've been driving for Warner for over a year. Uh, you and your you and your fiance. Uh, but you still paying for your CDL though. I I would have. Yeah, because I, it's I not like assume, it's not like Prime I, or. I mean, I I would assume that Warner would cover the cost of your. CDL because you you went through the school and you drove for them for over a year and you still you still paying them and now you're paying them close to yeah. 10 grand so the reason the reason why it's like that is because yeah Warner owns Roadmaster right but the, you're not Warner like I'm in, in the game you know they have like their system is different you know what I mean? Like Roadmaster, yeah, it's a Warner school, but it, it, you're not locked into a contract. So, like, say for instance, if I went to CR England, right? They put you on the contract that has to work that year. You see what I'm saying? With with Roadmaster and Warner, like you can go to Roadmaster and just not go to Warner at all. You're just responsible for the cost because you're financing it through their finance company. So that company is not really linked to Warner. Dollar General, you know that they, they, you know they, they claims that, um, you know, you can make about a hundred k or more. But like you said, and like I've been saying, you know, you you you're gonna work for that hundred k. It ain't gonna be easy. You know, rain, uh, snow, heat. You know, especially here in Ohio, it's been raining like cats and dolls over here. So I can imagine. <laughs> what's it what's it like for the drivers to be unloading the truck in you know in a downpour so yeah you you're gonna work for that money man all right um warner uh you you your your wife went through a cdl school through warner as well or through roadmaster as well or yeah because because of me uh so like Roadmaster in, in CDL school, and I'm pretty sure you understand this as well. You know, CDL school is all about, you know, you. Like, like there's you know, there's always people that's complaining about, oh, I went to a, a not so great CDL school. They didn't teach me anything. It's up to you to learn the stuff. Like, they're just there just so you can get the hours, or at least that's how I look at it. You know, like, I did a lot of, like, you know, looking at watching YouTube constantly on like how to pass you know pre-trip and pre-trip really wasn't that hard for me because i came from the automotive and the motorcycle industry so i understood like you know parts and things like that you know and it's just all about like you know understanding how certain things happen and for me it just clicked 
You see what I'm saying? So like I was able to almost pass, I almost pass it on the first try. Uh, I just got excited after passing the backing and almost ran into a fence. You know, so I had to go and retest. But there's people that have to take it. Like Roadmaster gives you five tries to pass the CDL test, which is actually pretty. That's more than a lot of other companies. It's funny that you said that uh, that you had to, you know, retake the test because after you was excited. It sounded like me back in the day. You know, I got excited after I I passed all the skills tests. And as soon as we got out on the road, that first channel turn, yeah, my my uh, tandems went up on the sidewalk. And, yeah, that was all she wrote for that. But came back, you know, for round two, knocked it out, got the license. I, I, I know the excitement of, uh, of uh, passing and everything. All right, man. So you and your fiance, uh, team driving right now, you – you uh, went back to Warner. They offered you a significant amount. Um, you've been driving for them over a year. Uh, how's, how has the company been treating y'all? Like, it's, it's, it's give and take. You know what I mean? There's pros and there's cons to it. You see what I'm saying? So, like, you know, there are some things that I don't like, you know, but there's also, there's also more that I do like. You know, we do... For the most part, I know with the account that we're on, which is a team account, you know, they for the most part keep us running, and we have a certain a certain system that we go by, you know, in order to maximize every load and all that jazz. You know, like sometimes they do give us crappy loads for a team, you know, like 200 miles or 300 miles or whatever, you know, and sometimes you just have to eat that L. Like it's all about this, it's give and take, you know. And I know with Warner, it's like, you know, you get a fleet manager. So if you don't like something, you could just call your fleet manager and be like, hey, I don't like this, you know, and they'll try their hardest to, you know, rectify it. Sometimes they don't rectify it. Sometimes it's something that you just got to eat. How, you know? do you, how do you guys manage like, your clock? Uh, and what I mean by that, like, I, I mean, did, did you have to get, did you and her have to get used to, uh, you know, sleeping while the other one's driving or do you guys just... oh yeah even even now like you know we, we've been doing it for we've been teaming for over six months you know me and her both take melatonin in order to go to sleep like i took melatonin earlier today and i was out for like at least the eight hour the first eight hours that she was driving you know like it, it, like if you don't like for me i know if i don't take the melatonin it's going to be hard depending on how sleepy i am you know, but with the account that we're on, we do get more downtime. You know, like we we and we're at the distribution center, we get to sleep there depending on what time you get there. So if you get there at like twelve AM, your next load is technically not picking up until two PM that afternoon. So you got a lot of time to sleep. You see what I'm saying? And then we go to the stores and when we get to the stores, if we get there at like two P two A two AM, we sleep until about eight AM until the store opens and then they unload us and then we hop back on the road and go back. You know, it, it's, it's a decent account. And like, that's the reason why when they offered us more money, I was like, okay, well we'll just stay because with me and my fiance being that I'm the more experienced person. Like she tends to just go with, all right, I know the best, you know, we, that's, we'll just do it, whatever you say. You and your fiance, y'all, y'all get along well in the truck. How how how's the atmosphere with uh, you and your fiance in the truck? I'm gonna I'm be honest, man. Like I don't like. There's a lot of people that's in the trucking industry that be like, oh, I want to be home for my family, blah 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 blah. You know, me and my fiance, we are like we excel more when we're separate. So like we can go days or weeks without seeing each other, right? And going from that, because we was in a long-distance relationship before I moved with her, because I, I, we actually live in Atlanta, right? And so I used to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I would come and see her once a month or whatever, right? But now we're seeing each other all the time. And sometimes we butt heads on that, you know, because I'm more money-driven. She's more, you know, I like the rest and stuff like that. But that's not the trucking industry. If those wheels ain't turning, you ain't earning. Y'all got kids? We do not. And like that's 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 the reason why we actually gave up our apartment because we don't have any kids. So like we don't have anything tying us and really having an apartment when you're 
an over the road truck driver is just a waste of money, really, from my perspective. I'll talk about uh, company drivers and, you know, a lot of new drivers that comes out here as well. You know, I always tell them not to get comfortable with with a company. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, leave, you know, have a, have an apartment or have something because, you know, these companies, you know, they, they, they could be savage. You know, they could tell you to hop up out their truck right then and there. And, you know, you being a driver, you have no choice but to because it's not your truck. But why do you felt it was for you to give up you know, you guys' apartments and everything and pack up and everything and and pretty much live out of the truck uh, at a at a company, if that so makes sense. So the reason why I did it is because, like, I'm thinking about it from a financial mindset, right? And I wish I would have known this earlier because I would have gotten my CDL earlier, right? When you're paying for an apartment, you're dishing out money and you're not getting a return on that. You see what I'm saying? Like, our goal, we have goals. You see what I'm saying? In order for us to reach those goals, we don't need that apartment. You see what I'm saying? Because all that apartment is, is a liability. You're not there. You know, you're paying twelve, thirteen, maybe even $1,400 a month for something that you're only spending four days at. For I know for us, four days a month there. And it serves no purpose. Well, we can just go get a quick hotel room for like fourteen, uh, $400, and then those four days, we'd spend four hundred dollars for a room and right back on the road, and don't have to pay living costs. The only thing we got to worry about is food. You know, like we're saving a lot of money. And like I know for my fiance, she saved close to six thousand dollars in this last six months. You know, me not as much, but you know, I also maintain my credit card, and I do have a decent savings. So you know, it's all about setting yourself up. Like you know, earlier, like we're not taught this. You see, what I'm saying we're not taught financial literacy. I know in our community, because I'm, of course, I'm black, you know, uh, in our community, we're not taught financial literacy. We're just taught to get, you know, live day to day or whatever the case may be, or paycheck to paycheck, you know, and once I understood finances and understood liabilities and stuff like that, I just didn't want an apartment anymore because, okay, I got my CDO. That means I always got a place to lay my head. And even if Warner lets me go right now, because they're downsizing, I can go and hop into another job, you know, by the end of the week and I'm back in a truck somewhere to live, you know, all that. So it's just about like, you know, knowing what your goals are, saving up your money, handle your money right too. In the long run, like, you know, my goal is not to be a company driver for the rest of my life. Like it's not it. Cause you, you're always limited on how much money you can make. You know what I mean? My goal is to become an owner operator, but right now it's not a good time for owner operator. You're right, man. I, and I could tell you, you know, I could tell by listening to you and, you know, listening to your story that, you know, the 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 goal at the end of the rainbow is to become a is to become an owner operator and own your own truck. And you doing you 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 doing the right thing to, you know, to achieve it. Um, you and your fiance, when how did you guys meet and you know what what actually brought y'all together to say hey let's go ahead and uh do this team thing so me and my fiance met when uh so i actually went to graduate school in alabama at uh, alabama a m university in huntsville alabama right and so she was already there uh she went to undergrad there and she went to grad school there so she has a master's degree right and so when we were there we just met each other vibed and we dated for maybe like a year and a half, give or take. And then we broke up, you know, just because, you know, me being a typical dude, you know, trying to have a cake and eat it too, I guess. And yeah. And so we broke up and then we went like maybe like five or six years, you know, not speaking to each other, not talking. But in the back of my mind, I always thought like, yeah, this is the one that got away. So if I see the opportunity, you know, have you ever seen WWE wrestling and all that stuff? You know, Randy Orton. Yeah, so I was just kind of trying to be a little sneaky snake, right? And so as soon as I saw that opening, whoosh, right back, back up on in there. What was the conversation like, you know, between y'all two of getting your getting your CDLs? Because you you mentioned she has a a master's degree, bro. Like, 
you want to drive trucks, but you got a master's degree. So what was her reasoning uh, other than the fact that she wants to, you know, team drive with you? But what was it? Was there any other reasons for her to uh, get her CDL? Yeah, uh, she she didn't really like her job, even though she has a master's degree. She didn't really like it. You know, she suffered from depression and anxiety and stuff like that. And so being around people and working with people you know, gave her anxiety. And so she just didn't want to really do it anymore. So like she was doing Uber and Lyft right beforehand. And then I, when I moved to Atlanta to be with her, you know, I was just like, I moved to Atlanta to get my CDL, you know, and be with her. You see what I'm saying? So once I did that and I started to understand like, Hey, you know, we can save more money by not having an apartment and you getting your CDL and we team driving for a little bit, you know, do the stuff that we need to do. Like, you know, have our wedding, pay for our wedding and get a house and all that jazz, you know, she was, she was down for it. She was like, yo, that's a great plan or whatever. Yo, I'll go to get my CDL. And then we'll do that for like a year, maybe two years, give or take whatever, you know, and get the stuff that we want to get, you know, that's really what it boils down to. Like, you know, being at trucking to me, is just like, you can do so much stuff. It's just, you need to know what your plan is. Like, a lot of people come in a truck and be like, oh, well, I'm just going to be a company driver and just figure it out later. No, you come up with a plan. You get, you do your stuff that you planned out, and then you bounce and figure out what else you want to do. You know, I know my goal, like, my, my goal is, like, to be an owner operator, to have rental properties and stuff like that. And I feel like trucking can get me there. You know, like, being like, I, with Warner, because I think you, you may have made a post or something about, like, about Warner and all that jazz. Like, you got a lot of people here that be million milers and all that jazz, you know, but that ain't me, man. I can't see myself becoming a million miler at a company, being a company driver for the rest of my life. Like, it's just not it. Because, like, even out here, you still got to answer to somebody. You know, Warner is the only place or the only company. I mean, I've seen a few others, but, yeah, Warner really, you know, really – uh awards their their million milers i mean i've seen i've seen a warner truck that actually had five million mile driver on it and i was like wow you know i mean i've seen i've, I've seen million miler i see two i see two million miler but five plus million miler on a warner truck is like is like a heavy accomplishment, man. Like, bro, it 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 is a it is a pretty big thing. Just because, like, you know, you like, it's hard. Like, most of those people that are those million milers and those five million miles and stuff like that, they're old men. You know what I mean? They come from a different era. You know, I'm a millennial, and millennials nowadays, like, they're not showing companies loyalty at all. Because at the end of the day, like you said, you know, it's a cutthroat industry. Like. You know, when you show a company a bunch of loyalty and you sacrifice your family, you sacrifice this and that, you know, birthday parties, whatever the case, you know, at the end of the day, they can easily come to you and be like, like you said, you know, hey, bring us our truck. Get out of here. You know, and those guys, they come from a different generation where they do believe in, hey, we're going to show this company loyalty and they're going to take care of us. And Warner do take care of you. I will give them that. Like they, as far as like startup companies and companies in general, they're probably one of the best ones. Like, yeah, they got their faults and, you know, all that other stuff. But, like, I would prefer working for Warner versus working for Western Express or whoever else, you know, or Swifty Swift or whatever. You know, Warner's good, and I'm not showing them loyalty, but at the end of the day, like, it's, it's, a, it's a money game. I'm going to follow the money. You know, they offered us more money, you know. Jerome, man, thank you very much for coming on, brother, man. I really do appreciate uh, you coming on, sharing your story. Uh, you, you would, um, you, you would recommend Warner for the for the new Jacks that's coming out here, though, would you? I, I would rec- I would recommend Warner. You know, to somebody that like warner if you don't go to roadmaster or an accredited school warner requires you to have 30 days of experience you know oh after that you know it's a good company to get your feet wet you know to learn as much as you can you know it's a good company in the beginning you know as far as staying here for 20 30 years you know it's up to you really 
you know, like as far as recommendation goes, like I would recommend them. You know, they're a good company, you know.